that has been tendered. Yes, sir. Uh, we see on the cover the name International Milling Corporation. Yes, sir. Now, but we've gone through part of the file, and all we see is a reference to Gambia Milling Corporation. Is yes. there a difference? Um, at the time the directives were issued by the office of the president, they were referring to the company as International Milling Corporation. But the entity that the GPA was dealing with concerning the land issue is a registered Gambian company called Gambia Milling Corporation. I see. And that is why it bears on the face of the file the name International Milling Corporation. Yes, because when the correspondence started mm. being received at the GPA, the company was being referred to as International Milling Corporation. All right. Yes. So it will be legitimate if we write International Milling Corporation, bracket, Gambia, Gambia Milling, Corporation. Milling Corporation. Yes, sir. They refer to the same entity. Very well. If it was the final. International Milling Corporation, brackets, Gambia Milling Corporation, file at Gambia Ports Authority, number GPA slash CONF slash 324 slash volume 1. Dated 14th February 2011, admitted Mark SC10. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Is there anything else? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, in our submission, we, the position of the GPA management uh, presently is that there were amounts outstanding for services rendered to Canilife family farms for okay. port handling. That were previously tendered, uh, admitted in this uh, commission? No, ma'am. Okay. These are additional charges? They are additional, ma'am. Tell us about them. Um, there were two issues. One was uh, in March 2009. Canilai Family Farm had a ship load of 10,401 metric tons cement, back cement, for which 50% waiver on the charges were accorded, leaving a net due of 
589 dialysis and 82 bottles, which was not paid. A waiver was accorded? 50% waiver of the charges were accorded who, who, and who? the net due. A waiver was accorded of 50%? Yes. Accorded by who? The GPA management. Who was the GPA management at the time? Um, in 2009, the, Mr. M.L. Jiba was the managing director. Repeat the figure that was purportedly waived. Um, 1,523,589.82. I see. So leaving another one, the same, the same figure? The same like amount was liable. Uh, before and we come to the waiver, was the amount that was outstanding paid? No, ma'am, the amount was not paid. So 50% was waived, but the amount outstanding was not paid? Yes, ma'am, it's also paid. What is, do you have a policy on waiver at the GPA? Yes, ma'am, usually uh, waivers are at the level of the board of directors. Was this matter taken to the board of directors? No, ma'am. It was waived at the level of management? Yes, ma'am. Was it subsequently reported to the board of directors? No, ma'am. How was it accounted for? Um, these were part of the Liability, outstanding liabilities that usually the management would report to the board for provisioning arrangements. But this matter was not part of that. It was never provisioned? No. So charges were waived and that's it? And even the amount outstanding was not provisioned? No, ma'am. I see. Okay. What is the position of the current GPA board on this? that this amount remains liable and due to be paid to the port from Kanirai Family Farm. I see. All right, is, is that all you? No, ma'am, there's uh, another one also on the same line in which Kanirai Family Farms in October 2012 applied for a waiver of the stevedoring and port due for two consignments. And the total amount due for two cargo vessels called MV Star One and MV Falak with a total cost of five million two hundred and ninety six thousand four hundred and fifty four dollars and sixty four bottles. Okay. So what happened when they applied for waiver? Uh, the waiver was granted by the GPA manager. Who was the managing director? October 2012. I believe it was in the time of Mr. Emel Jiba. That's right. October 2012. Were you part of GPA management at the time? Yes, ma'am. On what basis could you have granted waiver when it wasn't taken to the board by, you, by your own showing? Um, the managing director usually would take a decision and the other parties would be involved, informed to act accordingly. Did you have a management uh, committee that handles these things? No, ma'am. Just a sole decision of the managing director? Yes, the decision was the managing Mr. Jabati, were you consulted? Usually when such requests come, it goes down on the routine seat for comments from respective directors if the situation arises where your advice is consulted. Was your advice sought for these waivers? On this particular issue, no. Those two waivers? No. I see. So a waiver was granted? Yes, and it did not go to the, the board of directors as well? No, it did not. And the position of the present management is that what? 
these amounts are due and liable to be paid to the port authority. What steps have you taken to recover them? Um, these are information that we just um, managed to recover sometime last week when we were doing further search on the Canelite family farm transactions. Okay. You came across them? Yes, ma'am. I see. All right, can we have them? Can we have documents? What document do you have? Um, it's uh, one letter from GPA addressed to the money guy to Canila Family Farms, dated 30th March 2009. And another letter from Canila Family Farms, dated Monday 22nd October 2020, already submitted. Right, let's have them. Mr. Chairman, may I apply to have admitted um, documents from the Gambia Ports Authority relating to waivers sought and granted by the GPA management with respect to port dues from Kanilai family farms.
Gambia Port Authority documents relating to port charges waived for Kanilai family farms starting from 30th March 2009 to 22nd October 2012. Admitted Mark SC 11. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This policy you said, you told us about, about uh, waiver being the prerogative of the board. Is it a written policy? Yes, that provisioning usually is the level of the board of directors. Okay. I'm talking about waiver. You're no. mentioning provisioning. No, no, no. Waivers is, is not. Sorry? Waivers is not part of the mandate of the board of directors. Yes, is there a written policy? About mm. granting waivers? Yes. Um, not that I'm aware of. It's just not, why do you say it's not within the mandate of the board then, if there is no written policy? Because these charges are as per tariff. The charges are? Uh, based on tariff. Yes. Now, any waivers on the, the, the tariff has to come from the management, but in the form of a business approach. Because it's a purely commercial transaction. Um, I don't, I'm not sure I understand. It has to come from management to, to the board, you mean? No. Um, what I mean is uh, there's a tariff provision for yes. charges for services rendered. Yes. Usually when waivers are granted, it's at the level of the management committee where the issue is approached from a business perspective mm -hmm. because these are purely commercial operations and they are not given on a one-off because there's a schedule of port dues and rates regulations which is applied. I see. So um, that has to go to the board. Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So management does not have the authority basically, to waive these tariffs? No, it's as per tariff. Okay. All right. Do you have anything else? Um, at the moment, no, ma'am. All right. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. Jobate. The, the thank you. Commissioners may have questions for you. Um, Mr. Jobate, I just have a few questions, please. Yes. Um, going back to the Miss Black USA pageant, 2007, yes. the man paid of 305 to 8.90 US dollar. Um, was it recovered? I don't remember you mentioning that at all, or anything. No, it was not recovered. It was not recovered. No. So in GPS books, it's uh, receivable. Yes, ma'am. Um, and was the amount written off, or it's still showing? No, it was not written off. It's still... Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I'm right to say that this also was not communicated to the board? Yes, ma'am. It, it was not? No, ma'am. Okay, fine. Um, the next question I have is, who's the board secretary? The director of uh, human resources and administration is the secretary to the board. The secretary to the board. So in terms of who determines what should be communicated, agenda, preparing the agenda, do they have to work in conjunction with the MD? And the chairman. And the chairman? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I guess in terms of all the waivers that were granted and items, receivables, monies that were given out and not um, communicated to the board, it's based on, would you say, the authority of the MD, not to put it there? Because the board of, the, the secretary has to run it past him? Yes, it's a management decision. Management decision. Yes, ma'am. You know, you've mentioned who, who, who the board secretary is, which yes. you said is the director of HR. Yes, ma'am. And preparing the agenda is it's put together with the MD in consultation with the chairman, right? Yes, ma'am. I guess the chairman would be just saying these are the item points yes. to be discussed. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so in terms of, you made you, one last question. You made a statement where you said that the waivers that were granted um, no provisioning was done, which is fine. Um, but then the amounts, did you say that it was not captured in the records, the accounting records? 
I, I just wanted you to, to clarify. Hmm? If we are not, they were not part of the provisioning. What happened last, sometime last week, when we were doing further search about Kanilai family farm transactions, mm -hmm. we came across this uh, amount. But then were they captured as debtors in the, in the financial records? That's what I'm asking. Um, I'm not too sure about that. Because for you to apply provisioning, it has to have been recorded in the first place. Yes, indeed. Now, what I would like to know is, could you check that it's actually captured in the records, the financial records of GPA? Okay. Um, whilst you're at that as well, you also mentioned that for waivers, um, it usually has to go to board level, which uh, makes sense. But then as a management, would you not have a cert up to a certain limit that waivers can be approved in, in a commercial business? No, there is no policy on granting waivers because the charges are as per tariff. If the issue comes for granting of waivers, normally it should go to a management committee and ultimately to the board because these are purely tariff-based charges. Okay, so the MD, up to MD level, he can give zero waiver. That's what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, that's fine. I'm not clear on that point. The board does not have to be involved in the waivers. Can no. you confirm? No, usually the, it's not. The, the daily running of the port is delegated to the management to of the, the GPA. Yes, sir. So it's just a formality to escalate to the board where necessary. Yes, sir. That's correct. Yes, sir. So the board is primarily responsible for governance, not for commercial decisions. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. One question. In terms of uh, receiving formal requests that you term directives, what's the approach? Once you receive it as the MD or the DMD, What's your next step? Do you go ahead and execute? Or do you say directive is not law, therefore let me refer to internal counsel and then we move from there? By the way, do you have internal counsel? Is there a director for legal matters in the authority? Presently, no. You never had? No. We During used the to, period of the directive? We used to have a a trained lawyer in our management. Internal and external? Yes, internal, and we have a legal retainer. Okay. Anything on record showing you're referring to one of these directives for internal counsel no. to advise way forward? Not at all. Why was not done? Um, the decision was taken by the GPA management to implement the directives without consulting for legal So the, f opinion. the management found it totally unnecessary to seek legal counsel, even with the full knowledge that directive is not law, and that there is somebody in-house or externally to advise on way forward. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Thank you. I'm um, sorry. Yes, just following up on that, one final question. Um, on this land issue, you mentioned that the compensation should have been $18.4 million. Yes. Um, <clears throat> again, now I'm interested in from the accounting side. Is this showing as a debtor in GPA's books? That's the entire amount? Yes, ma'am. 18.4 million, yes. No, my question is, is that recorded in the financial records? 18.4 uh, million? I'm not too sure, but I'll find out. So you want to find out for me? Yes. So I you have did. two questions to come back to me on? Yes, I did. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry, just a question which follows up on the questions asked by the commissioners. Your operations are guided by statute, is that not so? Yes, ma'am. And your tariffs are published as um, part of your regulations? Yes, ma'am, they are published tariffs. Do you know whether there is any provision on waiver? Uh, if you don't, it's fine, we no. can check it. No, I, I'll check. I don't, I'm not too okay. sure. That's fine. We will um, let you know when you can come back okay. with, with appropriate answers Thank and you. with the information on YDE as well, Youth Development Enterprises. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay.
Mr. Chairman, I call Mr. Augustus from. Augustus from Associates. Who's, who's giving evidence? Senior? All right. I swear by the Almighty God. I swear by the Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give to this commission. That the evidence I shall give to this commission. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Um, can you give your full names to the commission? Um, Mr. Augustus Prom. Where do you live? Um, liquidator. Of Where do you live? My. Where do you live? My. Where do you live? I live at Kutu. Kutu. Kutu West. And you are the senior partner, Augustus Prom Associates. What is, what is it? Have I seen my? Sorry. Sorry, I'm just. No, that's fine. What's the proper name of the farm? What is the proper name of the farm? My the name, farm, of the farm. name of the farm is Augustus Prom. Okay. That are certified accountants. Okay. What Aud position do you hold there? Audit tax advisor. What, what position do you hold there? I am the. Chief Executive, Managing Practitioner. Very well. Would you like to sit down, Mr. Prom? Yes, please. Mr. Prom, your firm was appointed receivers by the High Court. In your firm receivers. Was, hmm? Your firm was appointed receivers by the High Court. Re receivers of various companies um, that were operated by the, the ex President Jami. Asking the firm was appointed receivers for various companies that were owned by President Jami. Yes. All right. Um, have you submitted an interim report yet? Have you submitted an interim report yet? Not, not on the receivership. I see. What have you submitted? We are on? in the process of preparing the interim report. Okay. All right. Did you submit any reports yet? Any reports? Did you submit any reports yet? On what? The receivership, not liquidation. On the receivership. This just started in um, June, and um, we've been working with these various companies, and we are now actually preparing an interim report. Now, you, your summons, you were summoned with regard to... On all the companies. APAM, Alhamdulillah, Petroleum and Mining Company, um, and Kanaji, Kanaji Assets. Is um, APAM one of the companies you are handling? Is APAM one of the companies in receivership? No, APAM is not. You were not appointed as um, a receiver of APAM? You were not appointed receiver of APAM? Where do we are appointed? Yeah, receiver of APAM. No, we are not yet we are not appointed as receiver of APAM. I see. Did you do any work in relation to APAM? Did you do any work in relation to APAM? Um, through the 
through the liquidation of Carnegie Minerals, we had cause to briefly, not, not totally, briefly deal with Apam or Tony Gatta. I see. You have been appointed liquidators of Carnegie Minerals. You were appointed liquidators of Carnegie Minerals. Yes, I was appointed liquidator of Carnegie Minerals, Gambia Limited. I see. Okay, have you completed your liquidation yet? Have you completed your liquidation yet? It's, it's almost concluded. It's almost coming to conclusion. Um, but we are still working on the liquidation. What sort of liquidation is it? What, what sort of liquidation is it? What? What sort of liquidation is it? What sort of liquidation? Yeah. Is it a compulsory it's a, liquidation? It's a, it's a compulsory liquidation. By order of the court? By order of the court? By order of the court, yes. yes. Do you have any documents with you regarding the liquidation? Do you have any documents with you regarding the liquidation? Yes, I have the volume one report. We just finished, starting from the time we were appointed liquidator, or I was appointed liquidator in 2015, August of 2015, to date. August? The date again? Repeat the, the date. The date. The date, 5th, 6th August. 6th August, 6th August 2015. 2015. 2015. 2015, yes. When the ruling, the date of the ruling itself, when we were when I was appointed liquidator. So um, you have a volume one of your report. Does it cover the Carnegie assets? Does the volume one report cover the Carnegie assets? Yes, there is a <coughs> an in joint inventory exercise that was done on the Carnegie assets. Done by whom? Joint, jointly? It was done by who? By, by us, by me and my team, by the um, sheriff, sheriff, Honorable Sheriff of the Gambia and his team, and uh, a witness from the Solicitor General and Legal Secretary also was part of the team okay. to do the inventory of Carnegie Minerals Gambia Limited. The inventory has been done. The inventory has been done. Yes, that has been done and signed. Uh, have the assets been valued? Have the assets been valued? Um, we did not value the assets, but there was a previous exercise when the assets were actually in the custody of the sheriff bill, sheriff, honorable sheriff. They did an exercise with um, Ibrahim Anjai, ME Mechanical Services, a consultant. And he did um, an inventory together with valuation. Uh, I mean, our exercise didn't cover valuation because we didn't want, but there was a valuation done at that particular, at that particular exercise, which okay. do you is have still the, useful. Do you have the valuation as well? Do you have the valuation report? You have the valuation report. Yes, I have the valuation report. Yeah. If we may have these documents, then your report, your volume one of your report, you said on Carnegie Minerals liquidation, which your firm is conducting, and um, the inventory of Carnegie assets and the valuation reports. If, if we they, can have those. If they may have the reports. Yes, yes, yes. If the reports are here, we can let you have them. Um, there. <coughs> yes. can you they are made can in, you, made in can, sets because sorry? those, those reports also form part of, part of my report on the liquidation. Which report? So that is my report, the, 
the joint inventory exercise and the evaluation report are all in one, one set. Right. Can you take them out and tell us exactly what you have? What you're... Can you take them out and take tell them us out of exactly the envelope and tell us exactly what you have? We are interested in, at this time, we are interested in what relates to the Kanaji, Kanaji assets. Okay. At this time, we are interested in the Kanaji assets. Yes. Can he tell us what he, it is that he's giving us? Yes. Well, uh, the, I'm sorry. Could you tell him because you've not been sworn? Okay, okay. Would well, you like to be sworn to? Um, yes. Yes. So you can assist your dad. Yes. What position do you hold in the company? I am in assistant. Your, uh, position in the company. In I am, your in your firm. It's a firm, isn't it? Yes, it's a firm. I'm the head of uh, tax and advisory, and okay. I'm also assistant to the liquidator on this engagement. Right. Mr. Chairman, may I apply that um, he be sworn to assist um, Mr. Prom Senior? Absolutely no problem. That's granted. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, that's right. I swear by the Almighty God. I swear by the Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give to this commission. That the evidence I shall give to this commission. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> May I say? Yeah. Yeah, please. Yes, my name is Louis Prom. Louis Prom. Yes. Sorry, Louis Prom. Yes. What is the position you hold in the com in the firm? Uh, Augustus Prom. Currently, I'm the head of uh, tax and advisory. Tax. And advisory. Tax and advisory. Yes. All right. Could you, Mr. Prom Senior, would hand over the documents that he's been requested to produce, and if you could explain to the commission. Uh, what the document is. Okay. Um, ba basically, it's um, the liquidation report, volume one. The it, liquidation of Carnegie Minerals. Carnegie Minerals, Gambia Limited. Okay. Um, it covers the point of appointment from 6th August 2015 up to, the, up to 31st August 2017. And it has a series of um, attachments of, and appendixes which includes letters, financial reports, and also the joint inventory report that was done with the Sheriff's Division and also Ministry of Justice. And it also has the force report that was done for the Sheriff's Division that has the valuation, which was used as a guide for the joint inventory report that was done, um, that was done recently. Is, is that all in Volume 1? Yes, that's all part of Volume 1. Okay. What else do you have? You have the inventory is there. The uh, evaluation also is there. Yes. Okay. What other report do you want? Sorry. Do you have what other report do you have on well, this Kanaji issue? I see there are other volumes. Lord, actually, this is appendix two and appendix one. Ah, I see. It's, it's part of the main the report, report because it, it's so bulky. Much. So we decided to segregate it. Thank you. Um, could you tell us what the value of the assets are? No, from the report. <coughs> value of the assets. Is it in the report? You said the valuation. Yes, it's, it's, it's in the report. The when, was the, when was the valuation done? The, the first valuation that was done for the Sheriff's Division was in July 2015. Um, and altogether, you have a total value in Dallas of. Uh, 
um, thirteen thousand and thirty dollars. Okay. Is that what what value is it? Is it is it the market value? What what sort of value was that? Well, it, it didn't indicate in the report. It, it but, didn't. Okay. Um, it should be. Yes, original cost and present value. Present value. The present the value. Yeah. 2015. 20, July there, 2015. Was there any subsequent valuation? No, not That's after the only valuation. No. Are these, um, this is 2015, that's two years ago. Yes. When last did, did your firm deal with these assets? Are they, are they in existence? Are they still there? Yes, they are, because um, we actually visit these sites at least once a month. Um, sometimes I personally visit. My last visit was on Sunday. Sometimes we do random visits. Um, we have hired a supervisor to be doing also um, spot checks, and we have watchmen at the site. But all this is indicated in the report. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you very much. If we can have those reports. We want the reports. Uh, by the way, is there anything in the report concerning um, stockpiles of heavy mineral concentrate. Did you ever have to deal with any stockpile of heavy mineral concentrates? Did we have to deal with any Left behind by Kanaji? Any stockpile of minerals left behind by Carnegie? Um, we, <laughs> by the time we started the liquidation, the stockpile that was there was the stockpile left there by Gamiko. Gamiko? Gamiko. Okay. And um, we didn't realize it was a stockpile because grass was being grown, or grass has grown all over the place, green grass. Okay. But then at a point in time, we were informed that um, APAM was actually taking these black sand, putting them into containers, and, uh, and uh, shipping them, taking them to the ports. Port Authority for for shipment, and uh, actually it's slightly it's covered in the report. In fact, we made a list of all the containers. I think there were about 35 containers, which were actually filled and taken to the ports. And when we found out, when we start asking, we were told that this was Gamiko Gamiko um, stockpile, the stockpile okay. of Carnegie. I think was taken by Gamiko. And we didn't know, we don't know how much this is. All right, um, thank you very much. M Mr. Chairman, I would like to apply to have admitted the Liquidators Volume 1 report on Carnegie Minerals Gambia Limited and the appendix, appendices 1 and 2.
Liquidators Report, Volume 1, on Kaniji Minerals, Gambia Limited, by Augustus Crum, a liquidator, dated 31st August 2017, plus Appendices 1 and 2, admitted Mark MS40. <coughs> Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. From, oh, you have some other reports for us? I see you have additional envelopes. No, it's the same report. I see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, it's, a, it's a copy. Yes, it's a Would copy. Would you like us to have that copy as well? It would be very kind of you to let us have another copy. Yes, 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 we'll provide. Okay, thank you. They want one more copy. I think they, they want one more copy. That's another set. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Mr. Prom, as you indicated, your firm was appointed by court order dated the 18th of May, 2017, as receiver of the companies um, that are listed in the order and also listed in the terms of reference of this commission. Now, I'd like to know how far, whether you have any, you, you did say you are not ready, your report is not ready, but obviously your work um, is related to what this commission is looking at. When can we expect um, that your report on these companies would be ready? Just asking about the receivership report. When it can be, when can we accept to have expect to have The, the report has been in progress. Um, we should be able to submit it within two weeks' time. Okay. Because the, the work actually started in uh, first week June. Um, actually, there are two court orders yes. with the same suit number. Yes, you have a second court order as well. Adding three more companies. So a total of 17 companies. How many companies? 17 companies on the receivership. And some of them have sub subsidiaries. So we'll, we should expect your report in two weeks? Yes, in two weeks. It has been in progress. Because as time is going, there is more information forthcoming. So we're coming to the point where we might have a cutoff period for volume one, and then subsequent reports will cover the incoming information. Okay. Are some of these companies operating? Um, apparently, most of them are actually dormant. But a few of them are operating, and those that are operating or that have some sort of a commercial purpose at this point, we have position managers to supervise and also provide some level of oversight to the receivership. Yes, but mostly um, we found out that most of them are dormant. I see. Are the managers, managers generating any quarterly reports, management accounts, for instance, or you do that for them? Um, no, not quarterly reports. But our managers on the ground are uh, preparing monthly reports, which we are consolidating. Yes. Okay. All right. Th thank you very much um, for now. Uh, we'd like to be alerted as soon as your report is ready. Mr. Chairman, th those are the questions I have for Augustus Prom. Yeah, just one little question. Um, <clears throat> from the time the ex-president left the country up to the time you took over the management of these properties by liquidation. Can, can you tell us who was managing these properties? Do you have any idea? For the liquidation, that one started before the company, before the president left. But for the receivership, um, these were managed by people who were appointed by the Secretary General at the, the directives of the president, I presume. 
but most of the top managers are appointed by the Secretary General or written by uh, a junior or somebody below the Secretary General um, who is stating that he's been directed by the Secretary General. So most of those, are usually the managing director, sometimes the finance, and the finance manager or operational manager. Um, between one and three people, but all the managing directors are appointed by the Secretary General of these companies that are active on receivership and, and are operating actively. There are some that were actually being managed by the, their owners, and, but then um, it is felt that the president has shares or uh, dealings with the, those companies. But most of the companies on the KFF, Kenny Life Family Farms, the managers are appointed by the Secretary General. And we do have copies which will be in the report. Thank you. Very well, you may leave. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Chairman, those, these, are, these are the witnesses for this morning's session. So until the afternoon. We'll come back at half past two.